Sega Ages, a tale as old as time. Starting off on the Sega Saturn in 1996, and then later on moving on to every other console you can think of. This thing just refuses to go away. Sega Ages has been a prevalent part of gaming, whether it's on the PS2, the Sega Ages 2500, or on the Xbox, Xbox 360, or Nintendo Switch. The brand did insanely well, putting out 13 volumes on the Sega Saturn and 33 volumes on the PS2 alone. My gosh, Sega. And that's not counting the releases on Nintendo Switch. The brand, up until 2012, was mainly in Japan only. These volumes never got worldwide release, and the closest thing we saw to Sega Ages releasing here was Sega Classics Collection for the PS2 in 2005. A compilation of remakes. I remember playing this when I was younger with family. We would always play Gornax, Tant R, or Bonanza Bros. And this was my first introduction to these games. And I fairly enjoyed my time with it. If you haven't noticed, Sega Ages just consists of ports, compilations, and remakes. As far as I've seen, only the PS2 got remakes. Everyone else will enjoy these old games, everyone. Whoa, well, after 2012, Sega Ages kind of died out, and the last game released for it was Fantasy Star Complete Collection on December 19th. In Japan, at least. Here we got the Toe Jam and Earl Collection on November 12th. Boy, lucky us. Well, that doesn't matter since in 2018 it came back when they re released Sonic 1. Did Sonic 1 really need to be re released with the Sega Ages brand? Come on, did Sega really think? Okay, guys, we're thinking of re releasing Sonic 1 for the Switch, but we just can't release Sonic 1 for the Switch alone, so what do we do? Oh, Sega Ages! Was there really a need to put over Sonic 1 at all? You can buy it pretty much anywhere. Sega Genesis, Game Boy Advance, Steam, Nintendo 3DS, Switch, freaking Apple and Amazon Fire TV. But Abraham, you might say, with this way, we can play it on the go. Well, guess what? There's a far more superior port of Sonic 1 on the Apple App Store and Google Play Store, which has native widescreen support, as well as app putting at 60 frames per second with controller support. Now, the one on the Switch is just Sonic 1 with being able to change between the Japan or US version. Yeah, they skimped out on bringing the mobile one over. Probably because that would require paying Christian Whitehead money for the work he did on it, and Sega probably just wants the money for themselves. So for the meantime, you can play the mobile version of Sonic 1 on the Switch. Not unless you- I've already talked about Sonic 1 in the past, and surprise, it was the Sega Ages version. If you've played the Sega Ages version of Sonic 1, well then it's safe to say you've played Sonic 1. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 also got released for Sega Ages earlier this year on February 20th, 2020. But I have plans about talking about that game on its own in the future. But for the meantime, I'll just say that, yeah, it's Sonic 2 and Knuckles, alright? Sega Ages on the Switch is pretty cool. Every game has its own variation of the Sega Ages intro with panels from the game being shown and... Sound effects and main theme is pretty common and nostalgic and sounds like something that could be from Sonic Mega Collection. As of right now, I don't own every Sega Ages game that's currently on the Switch, but I do own a few of them. So we'll just take a look at those for now. First, let's talk about Space Harrier, the one I'm least qualified to talk about. I just never really got into Space Harrier. Sure, I played it on Sega Classics Collection and beat it on Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection, but I never really took the time to really spend that much time on it. Practically the only reason I would play it on Sega Classics Collection was to hear the Game Over music. But looking at it now, since it's been about 7 years since I've beaten it on Sonic's Genesis Collection, what is up with this control scheme? It's vertically inverted, so up is down and down is up, so I keep dying. Good thing you can change it though. This makes it so much easier. So the default mode is where you have 3 continues and you press X to insert a coin. That's the thing with Sega Ages on the Switch, you can change your difficulty among other small things. Space Harrier is pretty fun for a rail shooter though and can be challenging at points, especially when multiple enemies are on the screen. You have two fire modes, a single fire mode and a full auto. You also fly and can run on the floor. The game is pretty easy though, but there can be times where it can be just unfair. You move so fast and fluid and it allows easy dodging of crap being thrown and shot at you like here with the boss battles you have at the end of every stage. Speaking of stages, the level design is insane. It's very vibrant and vivid. It's very 90 Sega. 
The later levels definitely get more harder with more stuff to navigate, and having faster reflexes and reaction time definitely is a must here. Every now and then you'll get a bonus round and it's basically just wreck a bunch of trees and stuff for more points for an extra life. That's pretty much it for the base game. I made it to stage 6 until I got a game over and there's about 18 in total. In the Sega Ages version though there's an extra game mode and it just adds a barrier that destroys anything that it touches but not enemy fire. So moving on. Outrun is next and we start getting into more of my territory. I'm a car guy. Racing games are some of my favorite to play. Just look at Burnout. Outrun is an arcade time show racer where you race to one of five finish lines. Ah! My eyes! Ugh, that's better. That's what makes this game unique. You have multiple paths to go down to, and depending on how you play, every playthrough can be different and unique. It can be a long while before you go down every path. It's very similar to Red Racer as to where you really need to let go of the gas to make the turn and to not crash while moving the stick back and forth a lot because of how fast you go. So this is basically half racing sim, half arcade racer. And the frame rate is crazy smooth, running at 60 frames per second and when taking off, it definitely hurts my eyes. There's an old mode which is from the original game and the new mode which is from the Sega Classics Collection version. And as a kid, I never made it far because I would always crash, but now... Well, almost. So I changed the time to 5 minutes instead of 4, and... Almost again. This game is really fun, and I definitely recommend getting it if you haven't already. I really like how the time of day changes with every area you go to, with going from the beach to a canyon to ruins or snow. And you unlock stuff as you play, like a steering wheel upgrade to help you take turns better, and yeah, it definitely does what it does. You're definitely not hugging the outside all the time when you're turning now. Overall, Outrun is a fun game. I definitely enjoyed my time with it, and you should definitely pick it up if you haven't already. Virtual Racing is up next, and it's another racing game which uses polygonal models much like Star Fox. Ah, oh, jeez, I got chill. You have three maps to choose from. The gameplay is like your typical F1 racer. The gameplay is fast and the steering is really sensitive. There's a motion sensor which is just motion controls and more in line with the way the game was meant to be played. But you see the thing is, with motion controls, even with the wheel it's still pretty weird. Cause there's no point until where you can't turn it anymore like a real steering wheel. You can just rotate it around again and again and there's no resistance either. Leading to... After playing for a while though, it gives all the same vibe you get for playing Grid Autosport with the motion controls. Just don't. Sure, it can give off a little more realistic vibe, but like I said, there's no dead point and no resistance so you basically just slide everywhere and you lose calibration really easy. If this was like an actual steering wheel or arcade cabinet, then yeah, go for it, but it's not so. Hey, this one also features online play and split screen too if that's your thing. And you can also change the mode from the standard 5 laps to a more Grand Prix 20 lap race. The game is nothing too special, it plays like Downforce, just not as fun or cool though. Now the last game we'll be looking at today is Puyo Puyo. I love Puyo Puyo, it's just so fun to change stuff and the game has a lot of charm. I only have Puyo Puyo 2 though. It was either Puyo Puyo or Puyo Puyo 2, so I just chose Puyo Puyo 2. It has quite a few options such as changing the colors from normal to limited, or adding rounds, or changing the colors of the Puyo Puyo themselves. The game plays like Tetris, but instead of trying to clear a row, you try to match 4 Puyo Puyo of the same color. And the more you clear in a row, the more garbage Puyo that get added to the person you're going up against and vice versa. It can get really chaotic when playing against friends and can maybe even ruin friendships. I thought I was pretty good though, but then I went up against the AI. Puyo Puyo 2 has the basics, endurance mode and an arcade mode. In arcade mode you make your way up a pillar knocking out foes after foes across 4 levels and 15 stages. It can take you a while depending on how good you are because some of them are easy. And then there's others like Nohoho who freaking cheat. He just fills up the rows until he gets lucky and he gets lucky a lot. Now why is it that when the AI do it they destroy you but when you do it you get nothing but garbage. This is some crap game design. It's so unfair. 
People say Matt is the hardest boss fight. No! It's no ho ho. Ugh! Keep in mind, I'm on the easiest difficult setting too, and I'm getting destroyed. This game is so unfair. It's rigged where he gets all the good stuff and you get nothing but garbage. But you know what? I'm not gonna stand with losing to a frog. So after that, I continued and beat everyone and man did none of them really give me a heart of a time like Nohoho did. But still, you can skip him. And the game is pretty fun and intense and is best when playing with friends or other people because it ensures that it will most likely be an even playing field. And none of this scar- Uh, how did you do that? How'd you get out of the TV? I have no idea what you said, but I think it involved you losing. <laughs>